They started as a punk trio in London in 1977. And then for a brief period of time, they were a quartet. Then they went back to being a power trio. Between 1977 and 1986, they sold over 75 million records, making them one of the biggest selling artists of all time. But then egos and ennui, I think, got in the way. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I think it's probably safe to say that at that induction, all the members were saying, don't stand so close to me. All right, let's pull over and find out about the story of the police. Let's drop the needle. The police was formed when the drummer, Stuart Copeland, from a band called Curved Air, met a bloke called Gordon Summer, who was a bassist, who went by the name Sting. But they decided that they needed a guitarist. So they recruited guitarist Henry Paravani as a third member. And they recorded their first single. It was called Fallout. It didn't sell. Meanwhile, String and Copeland went to see a band called Stronium 90, and they were really impressed by the guitarist Andy Summers. Now, Andy Summers was 10 years older than both of them, was a seasoned musician, a session player, and even played with Eric Burden and the Animals for a while. But Copeland and Sting were so impressed with his guitar playing that they decided to have him join the police. And so he did. And so for a while, the police was actually a quartet. But the quartet didn't last that long because Summers and Padovani really couldn't get along. And so eventually, Copeland and Sting decided Padovani had to go and Summers would stay. And so the police then became the power trio that we all know. Now, you may remember that early pictures of the police, you see they had all dyed their hair blonde. Never knew the story about that, and it's pretty interesting. What it was, was they had actually sold out to do a commercial for, of all people, Wrigley's Gum. And as a result, they had to dye their hair blonde. So they did. The commercial was never released but the blonde hair stayed, at least for a while. In 1978, the police released their first album, Atlantis de Amor, and it contains their controversial song, Roxanne. And just to hear Sting's voice about how he plaintively tells Roxanne she doesn't have to turn on that red light makes this record soar. As a result, the BBC banned it because what are we doing having the police sing about prostitutes? Other greats from the album are Next to You, So Lonely, and Can't Stand Losing You, all of which were written by Sting. On the strength of this record, the police traveled to New York and toured and played extensively. Then in 1979, they released her second album, Regatta de Blanc. Here we find the big hit, Message in a Bottle, but other great songs are the title, which translates into Right Regatta, and also Bring on the Night, Walking on the Moon, and This Bed's Too Big Without You. And with this album, the police start their first world tour. The next year, pressured by their record company, they release their third album, Zenyata Mundata. This is a huge hit for the police. It's number one in the UK, and it got to number five in the US. The hits are don't stand so close to me. Dee do do, dee da da. But I like Driven to Tears and also Shadows in the Rain. On the success of the three albums, the police continued to tour. And then in 1991, they released their fourth album, Ghost in the Machine. Here we get the monster hit, Every Little Thing She Does is Magic. And then there's also Spirits in the Material World, Demolition Man, and Darkness. And that, of course, it mentions my band that I had in high school. The album hit number one in the UK and number two in the US. By this time, Sting was becoming a movie star. He acted in the film of the Who's Quadrophenia and Brimstone and Tekel. Summer recorded his first album without the police, but this time with Robert Fripp of King Crimson. 
It's called Advanced Masks. And Stuart Copeland recorded the musical score for Francis Ford Coppola's film. And in 1983, the police released what would be their final album, Synchronicity. It contains four hit singles, Every Breath You Take, King of Pain, Wrapped Around Your Finger, and Synchronicity Number 2. I also like Oh My God and Tea in the Sahara. This album was their most successful. It reached number one in both the U.S. and the U.K. But recording this album was a problem for the band. The band was not getting along. And so each of the members recorded their own pieces separately. They weren't together to record this album. Nonetheless, the critics loved it and called the police the biggest band in the world. The police went out on tour to support this album, and it was a stadium tour where they played huge crowds at Comiskey Park in Chicago, and they even played Shea Stadium in front of 70,000 people. And according to Wikipedia, Sting from the stage thanked the Beatles for letting them use their stadium. The tour went on to include the UK and Australia, but Sting felt that their Shea Stadium performance was the pinnacle of the police's career. So the band paused and Sting released his first solo album, The Dream of the Blue Turtles. Copeland recorded an album called The Rhythmist and Summers recorded another album with Robert Fripp, Bewitched. But in typical rock and roll fashion, the police reformed and played at Giant Stadium in 1986. Now right after that concert, they were scheduled to go into the studio and record a new album. But Copeland fell off of his horse and damaged his collarbone, and so he couldn't play drums. So the studio album had to be postponed. And truth be known, Sting wasn't that hot on doing it anyway. So the police disbanded. Over the next 20 years, each of the members of the police had a very successful solo career. And then in 2013, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2007, they embarked on a police reunion tour. And interestingly enough, when they played in Paris on their closing night, the original guitarist, Henry Padovani, joined them on stage to play with them. Then in 2008, the police headlined the Isle of Wight Festival. And then they went on to play their last gig at Madison Square Garden in New York, where they included songs by The Cream and Jimi Hendrix as tributes to other power trios that had come before them. And then the police were done for good. Now, as usual, I've created a Spotify playlist, and here's the link to it, and I'll put it down in the comments below where you can listen to some of this music of the police that I've talked about in this episode. No doubt that 1978 until 1983 were the salad days of the police with five incredible albums that sold over 75 million records. Not bad for a band that started as a punk band but never really thought of themselves as a punk band and how they evolved and changed and their solo careers they've had over the years. I can definitely say the police and the members of the police made huge contributions to the music scene. Now, I'd like you all to keep looking for that message in a bottle. And thanks for watching, and keep a rockin'. If you like this episode, hit the like button, and you can also leave me a comment down below, and I'll respond to you. If you subscribe, we'll let you know when future episodes come out.